Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul with RP1 in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. And in the previous episode, we left off with attempting a geostationary satellite contract. And that didn't quite work out. We were short about 100 meters per second. This time we have an easy fix. And that is simply upgrading the LR-105 finally. Uh, so I bought the upgrade. Uh, we had been using the LR-43-NA-5. And that had a vacuum ISP of 301 and only 240 kilonewtons of thrust. Uh, the actual LR-105 has 352 kilonewtons of thrust and 309 vacuum ISP. So much better. And that means we won't be going overtime on the engine. And uh, hopefully its reliability is better. I didn't really check. Uh, though it must be said that um, we're starting from scratch on the data units. I don't remember. I think it might have failed once, uh, the the uh, LR-43. So hopefully it keeps going well. Uh, anyway, uh, something else that I discovered was that we don't need the probe cores anymore. I had put two Thor avionics units right here, but one of the technology upgrades that we got actually added a probe core to the tank. So now it says, and uh, I mean avionics core. Uh, this part allows control for vessels of up to 125 tons, and it required a technology unlock to function, and we have that now. So, no need for any additional core, and that saves us some mass. And altogether, I think this can handle 2 tons to orbit, maybe even more, but we're sizing for 2 tons to orbit, which means now that now the RD-0105 stage has 2,654, and our one kilonewton thruster stage has 1,942. So way more than the 100 meters per second we need. And so all good. Of course, getting rid of the cores means that it's cheaper. And yeah, there's really no downside to the situation. <laughs> and I want to test out the two ton capability of this anyway. So yep, everything is a good idea as far as this is concerned. I'm feeling good about this. So uh, let's make sure to build that. And uh, we already have queued up a recovery uh, mission, the, the Retrieval 1. And so that's under construction. That's probably going to go first, as you can see. Uh, I was also contemplating how to do a lunar lander mission. Now we have a serious constraint. Our launch pad mass is still only up to 150 tons. So I'll show you what I've got and it's a bit tricky. And actually when I say tricky I mean expensive. And that's because we're adding two boosters. You wanted boosters, you've got boosters and they are actually LRA9 boosters. I, I thought about uh, using actually the old RD100 but that's actually a horrible idea. Um, mainly because for some reason the rollout time is even more with those than with these LR-89s. Uh, I mean, the LR-89s are 300 apiece, these are 150 apiece, so it looks cheaper, but it ends up being more expensive because of the rollout cost. So, yeah, that's a peculiarity. Yep, that uh, will give us enough. What we've got here is three tons to orbit is what we're looking for. And uh, the three tons is mainly... Uh, an extended version of the RD-0105 stage. We've got room for improvement. You can see that these tanks are not being fully utilized and uh, that's because there's of course our tooled size for these tanks. So, you know, if we do get further upgrades on the engines, we can, or if, if I find out that it can handle more than three tons, then we can fill these up more. Uh, right now we don't need any more than this. This is enough to transfer the probe over to the moon. 3,229, so uh, that's good enough. And of course, we've got the usual hydrazine tank here. And uh, here we've got the upper stage core, and that's handling five tons as usual. And really, there's no reason to mess with that. Uh, very straightforward configuration, except uh, you'll note the fuels here. Aniline, furfural, in inhibited red fuming nitric acid well you know what this is yes it's the Araby it's the return of the Araby specifically the XASR and what it's gonna do is it's going to be our first deceleration uh, basically we gotta be doing a suicide 
um, burn to land. And it'll be handling the first minute and five seconds of that suicide burn. And the next bit of the suicide burn, about a thousand, no, probably a thousand two hundred or so meters per second, maybe a thousand four hundred, is going to be handled by RCS thrusters, four of them. And they are 223 Newton class. I don't know if it's enough thrust, actually. Let's find out. Let's see. Um, so we've got, uh, well, let's call it uh, 0 0.12. So that's 0.48 kilonewtons. Uh, that should be enough for the moon, right? <laughs> um, we're, we're one, okay, so we're 0.188 tons. And that means we need 1.8 kilonewtons in on Earth. So we need 0.3 kilonewtons on the moon. This is the way I figure it. Uh, 0.31. And we'll have just a little bit more than that. I don't know if having just a little bit more than that is a good idea. We should probably have like a lot more than that, but well, anyway, <laughs> it's gotta be how it is. Uh, we have the Pioneer Core, but you'll you would have noted that we were heavier than 0.1 tons, which is all the Pioneer Core can handle. So here we have another Avionics Core, a probe core. And that's actually most of the cost, well, not most, but it's a huge chunk of the cost here. You can see this little extra core that handles another 0.1 tons costs 1,949, which is like, you know, more than one-fifth the cost of the entire mission, annoyingly enough. Uh, this core, incidentally, only costs 205. It sort of makes you wonder why I don't just use another one of these here, but uh, this is only 20 kilograms, and I can't make this any smaller. So, in other words, I can't reduce the tonnage. If I could, I would. You know, if I could have it only handle 3 tons and it be lighter, that would be great. But, no such luck. Anyway, the good thing about this is, it's got the solar panels. And the solar panels, otherwise, would be very expensive. So, I'd rather just have the Pioneer core there and of course it's got the scientific instruments as well and of course no lander legs it's just gotta land on the tanks oh I forgot to mention I decided to use tank 3 high pressure uh, for these tanks because efficiency and uh, as far as tooling is concerned they are not currently tooled so just uh, that and the uh, decoupler uh, which is the decoupler right here, uh, are not tooled right now. So, yeah, it's a dodgy business, but it'll give us some opportunity to test a few things out and or get some more data units, you know. And, you know, uh, we do have room. If we wanted to add four of these boosters, we could. Though, that's going to push us above the limit here. And I did have to sneak an extra core here, by the way. Okay, so without further ado, we'll save that. Hopefully I didn't make any changes that would throw things off. And build. Okay, so this is our mission to reach orbital speed and uh, return safely to the Earth. Uncrewed, of course. Suborbital trajectory, we need an altitude above 150 kilometers. Speed greater than 6,500 meters per second. So. They don't want full orbit, and uh, that's fine. Obviously, it's easier not to retroburn anyway. Uh, ignition. Very simple, Juno sort of rocket. Except, of course, with the LR-89. I wonder why sometimes cheaper engines have higher rollout costs. I wonder what determines that. Wow, it's red these days, uh, over here now. There's some eerie stuff going on. I've seen it yellow. I haven't seen it red like this. But that's because it's just dawn right now, I suppose. Well, we're gonna have to pitch down. Come on. I know it's tough. But we don't want to overshoot too much. 
I'm also trying out uh, immediate staging of the RD-0105. Um, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, we got it kicked a bit. Uh, but it caught itself. Uh, sort of. Let's turn RCS on, maybe. Um, this is not helping anything. Well, good thing I had some extra fuel. Decided to do two flips, igniting immediately. So there's our little retrieval kit. Just the Navionics core and um, a tank of hydrazine, parachute, thrusters, just in case we actually need to deorbit and control ourselves. Okay, we've uh, reached the required orbital velocity, but we'll cushion the blow a bit. This is quite a steep periapsis, so. And shut down. 189 by 61.5 sounds good to me. Okay. Okay, that looks fine. Separation. And here, just go retrograde. Okay, we should be coming down somewhere, well, over here. Hopefully, well, we've got a lot of satellites up, so maybe they'll help, or otherwise, maybe one of the ground locations at Australia. Well, we have no connection, but I had given a prior command to hold retrograde, so it's doing that. But I did not arm the parachute. <laughs> oh, great. You know, we have a certain lack of... Oh, wait, we've got communication. I was going to say, we have a certain lack of communication over the Indian Ocean, but nope, we just got it. Arm parachute. And let's hold surface negative velocity. We just lost connection again, geez. Lots of ablating, considering, you know, there's a one meter heat shield and it's only 0. 0.2 tons, let's say. Oh, and overheating, what the heck? Hey, what about this whole heat shield thing do you not understand? It's not clipping the heat shield. It's highly irregular. Well, we didn't lose as much of later to, uh, as it initially seemed we would. But this is worrying. I mean, granted, it doesn't have very good tolerances. Max operational temp 4 and 25, skin operational temp... 765, but still. Heat shield. Uh, we didn't quite make Australia. There are the communication centers. Serious Omni ranges, but no line of sight. Oh, we've got pre deployment. Okay, splash down and recover. Recover. Well, uh, did we fill the contract? Messages. Um, all right, let's just say done here. Yes, yes we did. Barely, and that was because of a fortunate patch of connectivity in a great ocean lacking it. Indian Ocean, rough stuff. I could have, well, uh, we definitely need to put a geostationary satellite, but then again, with a 200 kilometer on the range, I don't think our geostationary satellite would help. So we just should probably put better antennae on. There are plenty of satellites in orbit right now that could have helped if it had some more range to it. Speaking of geostationary satellite, though, that's up next. Well, we've obviously gotten more funds, so let's get some more upgrade points, and I think 
R and D is the most pressing thing. I mean, when you take a look at it, we've got all this stuff going on, and I'd really like to finally unlock some pods. Thinking about it, actually, I would rather skip over the Mercury capsule. I mean, it's cheaper. Uh, there is that going for it, and its power requirements are less. Uh, but you know, it's gonna cost ninety thousand to unlock, and Gemini is just more useful overall. I don't know. I'll think about that. Uh, but uh, hopping over it doesn't cost that much science. When you take a look at uh, basic capsules, uh, costs 31. So that leaves us with 104. And advanced, ca oh, uh, and then we need second generation capsules, which requires that. And advanced capsules, era materials, so that's 50. Uh, which leaves us with 54 and then we need another 50 to unlock second gen generation capsule so even now we have enough science to do it so that's just a thought it'll just save us the unlock cost of the mercury but i don't know it depends on how you look at it i'll decide that when we have a choice but let's speed things up a bit past 0.3 science per day. That's about how much we got out of the previous contract. So I'll just spend that. Taking a look at what else we've got going here. Having crew is going to be a thing that we need to do just to get some contracts knocked out. But there's another one of these contracts for orbital velocity descent. Yep. I'll milk it. I'll milk it. There's that lunar landing, but let's do let's build the first test first before picking it up okay here we go for our geostationary satellite launch thrall is up sas is on ignition and launch so now when we drop the booster engines at two minutes and 15 seconds we should have less than an additional 3 minutes and 15 seconds on the core engine, the sustainer engine. Boosters away. 3 minutes 10 seconds left, that will be under the maximum burn time for this engine. First time we're actually launching <laughs> in this way, we usually overburn by a minute with the LR-43. So hopefully this will be good. Tentatively, it looks like we could carry even more payload than this with this rocket. We'll see how much Delta V we have left at the end. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. 210 by 147. And we have 493 meters per second left in this stage. So, yeah, it's got some extra capabilities. Separation. RCS on. Forward, forward, forward. Uh, fairing set. All right. We are set. Let's time warp to... Well, let me plot first. Let's see what we can do at the equator. Uh, uh, close to... Mm, close to Libreville. We've got quite a bit more delta V this time, so we'll we'll use it up. Mainly because I can't shut it down in time. It's such a short stage and it has a high thrust weight ratio at the end. Okay, throttling up. Checking the engine. It says very stable. Alright, ignition. And it lit. It's always the first battle. Okay. Oh, that should do it. All right. We got down to 22 degrees inclination. Mm, yeah, that, that looks pretty good right there. So 1,686.2 meters per second, and we've got 1,942, it says. We'll have this tag along and uh, use up its hydrazine anyway. If our satellite has extra hydrazine left, it's not a bad thing. 
station keeping and everything. It looks like we'll roughly be above the Indian Ocean, but again, if our satellites don't have long-range communication, that's not going to help, and our retrieval one did not and will not. The next one also does not have a larger antenna, mainly because our choices in that department are pretty horrible. Uh, this Pioneer 5 is definitely the best antenna we've got and might be for quite a long time. I hope it's showing much less delta V. I hope it's lying. If this stage had a controller, we could deorbit it, but actually, I could deorbit it and then boost the satellite back up, but we'll just use its fuel for our benefit. Okay. Well, now it says 1,900. Good. Hopefully it's telling the truth this time. Oh, but it's okay with the orbit. Yeah, a little bit too far. But anyway, it's satisfied, so I'm satisfied. And there we go. First geostationary satellite with almost 300 meters per second left. Good times. All right. Uh, let me try and quickly take care of this retrieval mission just so that we get it out of the way. And then we'll try Lunar Lander A, which is super expensive. You can see the retrieval mission only takes 11 days to build. Lunar Lander A takes 43. So, yeah. Uh, well, I thought it would just be a normal sort of launch again. And, you know, things would go easy for me, but... Then it decided to go tilted on the launch pad. And see that see that launch clamp right there? That launch clamp is twitching. So clearly this is going to be interesting. I mean maybe it'll still be alright, but it'll still be mildly interesting. Uh, so here we go with retrieval one again. And launch. It's all right. It'll be fine. We don't have any fins or anything though, so and we've got a mild roll right now. We actually really need to turn quickly. I've already delayed way too much. Probably the second stage flipped out last time because we weren't really pointed at prograde, and there was still some air when we separated. Wow, we're, uh, yeah, we're going too high here. Okay, I'll try and point more at prograde just at the last moment here, but we're going pretty high here. I guess that's alright. Should test that out too. Okay, separation. Okay, it's... Come on, you don't have to flip. You don't have to flip. The RCS doesn't actually work here, is the part of the problem. And that's because I don't think this tank is actually connected up to it. I, the heat shield's in the way, you see. I'm not even gonna wait, I'm gonna arm the parachute now. I don't see a downside. Okay. Getting ready for shutdown. Oh, oh, a little bit too far. But still technically suborbital, right? Everything is good. No problems. We can use the RCS to deorbit anyway. And let's sort things out here. Okay, that's good enough. Back to retrograde. Okay, we still have communications at this point, and just for the record, I'm keeping it at surface negative relative velocity, and we've got the parachute armed, and I don't intend to touch it again, so if we lose communication, we lose communication. Well, this time we've had pretty good communications, and, well, we're probably going to lose it soon, because it's only because of this Libreville. 
Okay, here we go again. We actually still have communication. And let's hope that the control unit still holds out in the heat. Oh, we've got a satellite in orbit, Lunar Atlas 3, that's helping us right now. It's in low orbit, so it's within range of this. Well, here we go with the heating again. Okay, we're going to be setting down pretty close to the Great Rift Valley. Lots of canyons here. I'm sure that'll make it somewhat an adventure for the retrieval crew. If they can actually ever find it again. <laughs> I mean, doesn't seem like the best spot to try and find a little capsule. Well, it's a savanna. It could be worse. It could be the jungle. Savannah's pretty flat and easy to spot things in. Oh, and we lost the heat shield. At six meters, seven meters per second? Jeez. That's harsh. Anyway, contract fulfilled. It's going to take 42 days to finish Lunar Lander A, and in that time we're going to get that first R&D building upgrade and also primitive solar panels. I think it's safe to say that we can speed things up again. Let's get a few more of these points. Expensive though they are. And get to 0.4 science per day, shall we? There we go. And... 2.5 build points per second. Okay. Uh, okay for now. Though, you know, I mean, there's expensive upgrades that we may eventually want. That one's not too expensive, but going from 150 to 350. Well, eventually. But I like the constraints, you know. Constraints force you to be inventive and occasionally use an Araby. But, uh, alright, 33 days now. Well, I'm going to time warp through it, though I am sort of aware that we haven't had an engine failure. And we're... Up next is a mission that's twice as expensive as any of the others. Or more than twice as expensive as any of the others. And has more engines, and has an error B. This makes me nervous. Alright, well, here we go. We have lined up with the moon. Farl up. SAS on. And... Ignition. And launch. A uh, thrust weight ratio of 2 on launch. I swear these boosters seem to run out quicker than I thought. But... Oh no, we lost one. That's got to make things a little bit awkward. But it's holding for now. Awkward because one side is nearly a full f full fuel tank, so... And it's the top one. Okay, uh, it's clear anyway. We didn't get all the Delta V we wanted though. Is it gonna be enough? I have no idea. It's so hard to tell with the whole booster separation thing on the Atlas rockets whether you've got enough margin for orbit at all. Okay, booster set. Okay, booster engine set, I should say. Well, we seem to have enough Delta V. We'll see. It's also going to be an interesting task just controlling this rocket. And making sure it actually gets to space, and that's important too. The Atlas tends to get into a pretty tight orbit. I swear it is some sort of cyclic slow down, speed up, slow down, speed up. I mean, in terms of frame rates or physics rate. 
Oh, you can see with the clock actually. It goes green, then goes yellow. It goes green, yellow, green, yellow. Like something's doing something intermittently. It's sort of annoying. I don't know what it is. But you can even see the numbers tick faster and then tick slower. Tick faster to tick slower. I don't know what mod is requiring those particular calculations at that interval. Okay, I don't even know if I need to shut down. <laughs> we'll see. It's gotta be close. Okay, I do. Okay, 240 by 147. Just barely made it, but that's probably because of the engine failure. We probably would have had more margin. I don't know how much more and how much more payload this can take. We'll have to figure that out when an engine doesn't fail. Anyway, separation. RCS. Puff. Our RCS seems to be working. So three tons to orbit this time. Uh, fairing set. Okay. All right. Well, let's plot for the moon. Optimism. All right. Well, I'm going to aim for coming straight down somewhere here. Eh, that, that looks pretty good. It'll be very sudden. But nearly vertical is good for estimations. This stage this time is two minutes. I'm gonna start these thrusters. There's no RCS thruster on the Araby stage. So we have to start those thrusters uh, once we dump this stage. All right, throttle up. Check the engine. And go. We have an ignition. Data unit still coming in on the RD0105. Uh, it's meantime before failure is 220 minutes, it says. The XASR, though, we've got all the data units. Meantime before failure, 24 minutes. And shut down. It was wandering off anyway. Uh, let's see what kind of situation we're in. Okay, uh, well, we need a little bit more RCS burning then. Um, well, we'll go with this for now, but actually I want it to be a little bit more firmly on the side facing the Earth, of course. But we can wait until we get into Lunar SOI before we do that. All right. Well, we're not recharging right now, but I think, no, while we're time warping, we're also not recharging. But we're in nighttime. There we go. Now we are. Gotta love these soul panels on the Pioneer 5. I, I get the strange feeling that this probe is going to be drastically repriced and placed somewhere else in the tech tree. Uh, sorry about that, folks. The thing is, I have no idea how long the RCS is going to take to burn. And we definitely need to burn it. Maybe it would have been better just carrying a 1 kN thruster. Those are relatively heavier, so and the ISP is the same, and they don't throttle. Okay, well, like I said, I would like that a little bit closer in, firmly on the side facing the Earth, which is definitely not the case right now. Turns out I should have just tried to land on the nighttime side, I think. Well, that's the end of that fuel. Okay, well... We'll take our chances with where we're pointed right now. Gotta remember signal delay. And, well, we're gonna not have any signal anyway. <laughs> uh, that might be a problem. Maybe I should have put a satellite around the moon to help with communications first. Okay, well, I just want to see how the RCS thrusters work and whether the Araby works, so let's orient. 
this is way early for this, but right before we lose communication, I want to make sure that we light the Araby. All right, throttle up and Araby. It could be like a geostationary satellite poking out somewhere, right? Well, the crazy thing is it got through the burn and we still have communications. Anyway, separation. Okay, well, we definitely don't need to start retro burning right now. Honestly, if I had known that we would keep communication this long, I would have started later on the ARB. I wonder... Not to jinx it, but what the heck are we communicating with? I don't even know. Yep. Uh, well, let's see. Oh. Um, Lunar Atlas 2 probe. Well, we're going to lose that soon. That was another failed mission. Or a transfer. Okay, let's see. How much can they decelerate us? Somewhat. Definitely need a one kill in thruster. Okay, okay, I, I don't want a physical time warp. It wiggles too much. Now, now we have no connection. I felt like we were too early on starting this out because I was pushed because of the communications. But looks like we might have actually been too late, if anything. We'll see. Even I don't know what's going to happen right now, and I can't tell. Minute to impact. Probably we're going to impact at a couple of hundred meters per second, though. Okay, uh, no little bit to count as a landing for us. Uh, you didn't do us that favor, right? Well, we have to transmit science from the moon, but yeah, definitely not a landing. So we'll have to do better. There are a few different options. I don't know what kind of technology 1960s, uh, 1960 oil rocketry will give us, but that's unlocking in six days. So that's a possibility. And what we really would like is an upgrade to the thruster technology, the RCS and the, high, uh, and the one kilonewton thruster. That would do quite a lot, but we'll see. Uh, we were close. We were close. There's there's hope. And uh, next time, we'll see what we can do. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.